hello everyone welcome to this lecture video here i am going to discuss about a few important points which we have to consider while dealing with the rc circuits so these are the two components you know which are really very important uh, as a circuit standpoint and uh, these are the few components you know which uh, you will encounter while you are designing uh, any electronic circuits for that matter and specifically i am going to talk about uh, rc circuits with uh, with considering uh, circuit design in vlsi and obviously it does apply to all the circuits in electronics but particularly i am talking about vlsi because uh, uh, that is where we usually consider rc circuits and they become very prominent uh, and understanding of our circuit becomes very necessary <coughs> let me give you just uh, let me just give you an example why it is so important uh, okay let me talk about uh, a simple circuit which is called as a cmos inverter cmos inverter <coughs> okay a cmos inverter is a circuit where you know it has two mosfets uh, one is called as a p mosfet and uh, another is called as the n mosfet which are connected like this so this device is my p mos and uh, this is my n mos and uh, these are the gate connections and uh, this is my input and uh, this this is my output <clears throat> there are many ways in which we you can uh, view this uh, there are many ways uh, sorry for that background noise there are many ways in which you can view this uh, entire circuit the best way to view this uh, if you want to do circuit analysis is uh, to treat this pmos and mos as simple resistors when these mosfets are on for example i can simply consider this as uh, r on which is the on resistance of the pmos and then i can treat this n mos as a resistor which i call it as r on n so when this devices are on operating in one particular region you know they just like act like a resistors okay and on this net we can imagine that there is some capacitance which is sitting on this particular node and uh, there can be many questions as to where this capacitor came from uh, the answer is pretty much simple okay okay now the question is uh, yeah you can consider you know that uh, a mosfet has a three terminal this is the gate terminal and uh, this is the drain this is the source and for the second mosfet this is the gate this is the source and this is the drain so there are different capacitors which i can show you which is connected to this net the first capacitor which you can see is connected between the drain of this and the drain of this and which goes to the fourth terminal of the mosfet which you call as the bulk and this goes to the bulk okay this capacitors are usually referred to as uh, the drain to bulk cap and uh, this is the drain to bulk of n mos and this is the drain to bulk of p mos okay uh, yeah and uh, yeah so there are many uh, capacitor which are going to sit on this particular net so all this together okay together they can be lumped and together they can be called as a single large capacitor which sits on this net and another important thing in cmos circuit is uh, when a logic 1 or vdd is given to this input uh, the output of inverter is zero or uh, it is vss and in this case when you give vdd as input only this n mos is going to be on and this p mos is going to be off so the on resistance of this uh, n mos p mos uh, when in on con off condition can be considered as infinity okay let me draw the equivalent circuit over here so when pmos is off you know and its on resistance is very high so i'll treat it as open circuit and nmos when it is on it has some finite resistance and obviously there is some capacitor which is sitting on this output node okay so let's assume that uh, the voltage on this capacitor is some uh, vdd let's assume that previously it was charged to vdd 
uh, let us just give some numbers let's say it is uh, let's say let's say it is 5 volts okay now if you see the circuit uh, what happens is uh, th there is a path which is created here right there is a capacitor which is charged to 5 volts and there is a resistor connected to ground so there is a discharge path for this capacitor all the way to ground but the discharge path is through this uh, uh, on resistance of the LMOS okay another similar case can happen uh, when when you give instead of VDD over here if you give ground or uh, let's say 0 volts VSS if I give VSS and the output is going to be VDD in this situation uh, what happens is if you give 0 or VSS the PMOS is going to be on and the NMOS is going to be off so if I have to draw the equivalent circuit it will look something like this because PMOS is on it will have some finite resistance okay and the NMOS is off okay so it just acts like an open circuit it acts like a open circuit like this and obviously we have an output cap which is sitting here <coughs> so these are the two cases which you encounter uh, okay when you MOSFET when you are giving uh, digital inputs uh, that is VDD and uh, VSS so this is the case uh, this is the circuit when your V in is equal to uh, VSS or let's say 0 volts and uh, this is the case when your V in is going to be <coughs> VDD or let's say for example I have given 5 volts okay fine so what happens in this case let's see what happens here so this is connected to VDD always because this is uh, this is our supply, supply rail so there is a supply voltage there is a resistance and capacitance and the other end of this capacitor is connected to ground so you can see that there is a charging path which is created <coughs> and in the second circuit there is a discharge path which is created so you see how we are going from the MOS, MOSFET level the MOSFET level analysis of the circuit that is uh, sorry we are going from the MOSFET level that is from uh, that is from this level of the circuit we are going all the way up to this level where we talk about uh, the RNC <coughs> now our circuit has become very simplified now I can talk about uh, this circuit in terms of R and C and uh, this C and this R for example let's say this first case what happens in this case in this case if I have to draw the circuit again we have a VDD net whose one end is connected to a resistor and the other end is connected to a capacitor which goes to ground and what about this circuit if I have to draw equivalent diagram there is a resistor which whose other end is connected to ground and uh, and there is a and there is a capacitor who which is initially charged to 5 volts <coughs> so if you have to just plot plot the voltages uh, what is the voltage of this capacitor here how does it change and what is the voltage of this capacitor here how does it change with time that becomes a very important analysis so if you are able to analyze and see how the voltage at this node changes with respect to time so if you are in a condition to analyze and draw the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time then you can debug such circuits very easily <coughs> for example uh, let me directly plot uh, the waveform uh, at this point C initially let's assume that this capacitor is at 0 volts because this node is connected to VDD or let's say it is 5 volts it will have a uh, charging path so this capacitor gets charged it will charge until it becomes 5 volts so let me just show a line which says 5 volts here initial capacitor voltage is 0 volts so if you if you analyze this circuit you will with some equations obviously we will discuss in some time later you will observe that this will be an exponential charging path and it will reach it will reach 5 volts okay 
and the time which it takes to reach 5 volts is uh, 5 into rc okay similarly in this case if you have to have to draw the same voltage across the capacitor versus time okay if you have to do the same here <coughs> this is vc that is this voltage this voltage initially the voltage is 5 volts so it is somewhere uh, somewhere here and the capacitor will discharge because this other end of this register is connected to ground so it will start from 5 volts initially and it will exponentially discharge like this and it will become 0 and the time it takes to become 0 is again 5 into r into, r into c so now that brings me to another point if you notice that phi into rc this r into c product is usually referred to, to as the time constant which we usually call it as tau so phi tau is the time taken for this capacitor to charge to vdd and again phi tau is the time taken for this capacitor to discharge completely so if you notice that r and c is the unit of time and because r and c is, is the unit of time we can do time analysis and we can plot the voltage across the nodes if you know r and c values and the nature of charging and discharging which i have clearly shown here is exponentially charging and uh, exponential discharging <coughs> so this is how it becomes very important to understand rc circuits i have explained this concept uh, considering vlsi circuit but it applies to any electronic circuits which has resistance and capacitance for example uh, let me just uh, uh, leave you with some questions let me draw a simple circuit let's uh, assume that there is a resistor here in some circuit and there is a capacitor let's call this as r1 and let's call it as uh, uh, let's call it as a c1 and uh, and yeah let me draw a second capacitor which is c2 okay in some circuit uh, let me not uh, name the circuit there is a requirement that you uh, such a circuit is to be built okay so i'm not going to answer this question i will leave you with few questions what happens if i am just going to give a pulse at this particular input how does this node voltage change so if you want to answer this question and without doing much mathematical calculation you will have to know and understand how does the rc circuit and how does the rc time constant work so it requires a very deep understanding of rc circuits it's not just about the r and c it is about the timing of the circuit and by time you know we are all we are talking about frequency also and we are talking about parameters like bandwidth right we are talking about all these important parameters in a circuit so because the r and c are the unit of time they all get associated or linked together so it all comes under a single big umbrella that is rc so i highly recommend that you understand rc circuit especially if you are entering into a industry which is very competent like uh, semiconductors a very deep understanding of RC circuits is uh, very much necessary and uh, essential. Okay, let me just stop here and uh, leave you with a couple of questions so that uh, when I make my next video, uh, you will have your own questions and uh, which uh, hopefully will get answered when I do my next lecture video. Also, I would like to recommend and uh, let me not advertise uh, my own lecture videos, but I will highly recommend that you refer to my lecture videos on RC circuits which I have posted on Udemy Udemy